Here's a fun subject. Let's call it cheating. Really cheating, now listen carefully, because sometimes what I'm going to say sounds like I'm promoting it, and sometimes it's going to sound like I'm making fun of it. We'll see what the actual conclusion is here. Here's what I mean by cheating. Your brain actually doesn't want to do much work. It's the version of, of motor learning efficiency. When you start trying to move something and the goal is to move it, your brain says, let's use every joint and every muscle that can help. Let's not put this stress on any specific thing. Let's spread it out throughout the body. And is there any way that we can figure out, this is what it's saying inside of itself, is there any way we can figure out how to actually reduce this stress further? And if you saw the video on inertia, you know where this is going. So this is really what, in, in, in many, many, many cases, cheating is all about, is spreading the stress throughout the body, even though you might have the goal of, I want to affect these guys right here. But our mindset is more weight is better. So I put a weight on there that I can't actually move with just these guys in a somewhat robotic fashion. So what do I do? Yeah. I reduce the resistance and turn it into what in essence is a clean and curl. Now it makes cool looking numbers on the end of the bar, but it actually reduces the stimulation here some. And I'm not saying he's not getting some benefit of this. He could actually cheat enough that he did virtually zero. He could start it with his hips and his low back and his calves and get almost nothing out of it. But somehow he's getting a piece of it here. But here's the interesting thing. If I made him do this strictly for, let's say, eight really, really hard reps, meaning in the end he really can't move it anymore and prevents this thing so he doesn't blow the benefit of the last rep. He actually gets something out of it. Whatever weight that is that he could do strictly, with full effort, he's, that's the only weight he's using here, assuming he's not cheating too much and even, even lessening it more than that. Meaning, if this is 100 pounds that he can do on a barbell this way, strictly, with effort, and he can do 150 pounds like this, he's not doing the other 50 with these guys. It's not possible. He just showed us what his max is across eight reps with maximum eight rep, eight rep effort. So the idea that he's getting more stimulation by putting extra weight on there and doing it with something else, not only is he not doing the extra 50 pounds, he might be cheating so much that he's not even getting 100. So um, why does everybody look like this? If it's wrong, why does everybody do it? It's the mindset that moving weight is, is, is all that it takes. It's the mindset that more is better instead of appropriate and perfect is best. Those are, those are very different concepts. Everybody's doing it so it doesn't look wrong. Now, they're certainly doing it in varying degrees. Sometimes not so much at the beginning of the set. Sometimes only at the end as if they're spotting themselves. And you can start to justify some of that stuff. The same as if someone came along and helped you when it got tough. But that's an actual, actual pretty, pretty um, intricate skill so that you don't just get to the end and just stop doing work, period. Um, it actually is an interesting skill to make the thing harder by not cheating. Our brain is set to learn the skill of making things easier, dispersing the load, reducing the challenge through launching it, versus the true skill of trying to improve the output and truly be effective with the stimulation we could call making the, the skill of making it more difficult or making it harder. So anyway, um, there's a reason everybody looks the same when they're doing this, because the brain, <laughs> everybody's brain figures out physics virtually the same way. What I mean by that is, what can I use, what strong stuff can I use, what's the first thing I can do to eliminate, to create the launch? I don't start it like this for the launch, that's hard. I start it like this, and everybody's brain figures that out really soon, that that's easier. So curls look like that for the most part across gyms. You're going to see this little choreography a lot in gyms. We just have a couple examples here, but they're all over the gym, right? So this is kind of a clean and row. So he starts pulling it. Watch the before this even starts pulling with his shoulder muscles, lats, back muscles. Or, you know, it's a shoulder joint muscle, your back muscles. But he actually starts here at the same time. He's coordinating 
unknowingly coordinating his efforts so that he's doing hip extension, knee extension, all this stuff at the same time to launch it. And then he can't get it any higher, so you've seen it. He gets up here and he comes down to meet it. Now the world will go that's full range of motion. What I see is a bunch of cheating and I don't see full range challenge. I see a launch, I see a, 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 an end to where the bar goes, and since the bar can't go any higher to him with the muscles, he comes down to meet it. There's so many examples of this. Is he getting some benefit from it? Obviously. He's not getting zero. Is this the most efficient way? Sometimes finding a more effective way can actually say, how many sets does he have to do with this actual reduced version of challenge? Would he have to do the same number of sets to get the, a, a challenge from a more effective exercise? Those are some interesting questions. Here's, here's one of my favorites. You know, he's, he's got some speed in this thing. He's got some nice cervical extension there. He's got great hat posture. And here he is. You know, there's another thing. This is one of my favorites. You see this in the gym all the time. This is exactly why some people go, somebody can do a pull down with 300 pounds. And they can't do the same. They can't do chin ups with 200 pound body weight. So pull downs don't train you for chin ups because he's not doing a pull down. He's not using chin-up muscles. He's using his ass and his low back and leveraging himself in this thing. There's nothing wrong with having his feet under the pad. There's nothing wrong with having his feet against the supports when he's doing the row. But he shouldn't be using everything else if the goal is, come on, dude, this stuff, then use this stuff. Don't use it to make it kind of finalize a weight that's been reduced to almost zero by launching it with something else. So anyway, take a look. Oh, that's the, f oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I have a bonus for you. <laughs> Can't find it. Here you go. I'm gonna call this the commander, <laughs> the commander and cheat. <laughs> so here he is, and that's a really popular one too. So you get, uh, he has got all kinds of fun things. It's like, let's just reduce the value of the curl and the press and the lunge. That actually is not bad right there. This is fun. I always wonder, this is not so much cheating, but it's a waste of time. He steps up with resistance, and I don't know if that's appropriate step for him. It's just a bench. But the funny thing was that he, uh, this whole choreography of bringing the other leg up, like that matters. It's totally stupid, but you know, not as much. Seriously, I don't mind making fun of him. That's you know what we do in this country. But the other guys that were doing that, they weren't really. I'm not making fun of them. They probably don't even know they're doing it wrong. They're doing it like everybody else in the gym, from a mechanics point of view, from an applying physics to the body as a form of stimulus to alter, create adap adaptation and response. There's a more effective, more efficient way. Why don't more people do it? Because it's actually really hard. And even people that go to the gym to work hard actually are spending a lot of time avoiding true challenge.